Well, we just have the seventh and eighth day of the G1 Climax 30 tournament. So we're gonna review both the A block and the B block, see who gained more points, who hasn't gained any points whatsoever. All of that is coming up on Deleted Wrestle Zone. everyone welcome to deleted wrestle zone all things pro wrestling from aew nxt new japan pro wrestling impact wrestling uh, the national wrestling alliance promotions wrestlers matches championships all of it so i'm your host j rod here uh before i start uh with the episode i want to talk to you guys something that apparently some people do not keep in uh, track of the timeline of whatever videos i post if that's include the videos of this episode and the previous or the news update alerts that I posted out uh, Some people were saying things about that Jeff that uh, if you guys recall we we saw Jeff Cobb Being in all elite, but he wasn't officially now my assumption at the time that he's going to join all elite because we heard that he was no longer working with Ring of Honor and we know that uh, all elite were interested in him and giving him the fact that he likes going to Japan, they were going to give him a contract that allows him to work with New Japan. So that was like seven months ago. And people think that I'm talking about it now. You see, that was then. This is now. But back then, I corrected myself. But people are still thinking. Hope you guys keep in mind. Whatever news update I posted in the past, that was then. This is now. We're not going to jump back to the past and try to say... What I, what I was reporting this. This was months ago. I already corrected myself, but if you guys don't pay attention, you guys better get off the damn bus. Now, let's start right now with the seventh day of the G1 Climax with the A Block. Okay, so right now we're doing the A block. As you know, we always start out with the Young Lions uh, matches because it's always been the opener. But however, I don't talk about it unless there's a good match. But if you must know, I have been noticing recently with the Young Lions that they're now confident making the Young Lions more recognizable, more efficient, more positioned, how people would enjoy it. You know, some people would say, but the Young Lions are not, uh, they're just wrestlers in training. That may be true, but it keeps you in mind who could be a prominent wrestler to be a full-time member with New Japan Pro Wrestling? Now, keep in mind, once these wrestlers are, these young lions are done training, what they do next is they send them on excursions to other promotions across, who, that are affiliated with New Japan. For example, uh, they are affiliated with Consejo Mundial Lucha Libre, um, Ring of Honor, and of course, uh, Ref Pro down in... Um, in the United Kingdom, as you know, Sh uh, Shota Umino, but as Moxley would call him, Shooter, he's currently doing an excursion in Ref Pro at the UK. Uh, Master Wado originally was doing excursion down in Mexico, uh, but I do know Red Narita, who was once part of the Young Lions program in Japan, is currently under the training of Shibata at the LA Dojo. So pr pay attention to a lot of the Young Lions. You may be surprised what they can do. Now, let's jump in with the first match of the A Block. So, we got um, Yujiro Takahashi versus the king himself, Minoru Suzuki. Now, you all, who those of you who follow Minoru Suzuki, you know what he's capable of. Probably, in your mind, you're saying, oh, Minoru Suzuki is going to eat up Yujiro Takahashi. I would agree with you, Wei. But I have to say, in this match, it did show a lot of valid effort by Yujiro. Like, he knows for a fact... Right from the start, who is he facing? But the real problem, can he try to survive him? That's always been it. I mean, he did great, had some great spots fighting back. But however, you are unmatched to the king himself. So, Minoru Suzuki won the match by applying not only the sleeper hold, but also the gotch style power driver. So, he gained two points, Yujiro two. 
Next match, we got, uh, who's next? Jeff Cobb versus Kota Ibushi. Now, this is one of those hard-hitting match. If you guys follow Jeff Cobb, you know what he's, he's good. He's powerful. Um, Kota Ibushi, he's an amazing striker. He knows exactly what to do. He has a bit of the MMA background. But this is one of those matches you know for a fact this is going to be a good one. But I have seen Kota take a hit many times over. But if you guys have noticed, he did lose a tooth during the tournament. It was confirmed during the post-match. But unbelievably, I love how this match ended with Kota Bushi actually gaining two points on this one and Jeff Cobb zero. But I will reveal more about the point system at, in a little while so you guys get a clear idea what is going to happen. Next match we have, ooh, this one's even good. We have Tai Chi and Kaguchika Okada. Now keep in mind, Tai Chi already had three victories prior to this match. Kaguchika Okada, I think he only had, uh, let me look real back on my notes. I have the, had them. He already had two losses and one win. So this is one of those matches that Tai Chi knows what's important. Tai Chi has always been spending time believing that he is the bigger star, that Okada's the pass, that he needs to step down and let him be the one to grab the brass ring. That's always been the interpretation with Tai Chi since we've now been seeing Tai Chi's been getting a much bigger push. But this match was unbelievable because it showed Tai Chi how he's determined to succeed. The show, Okada is done. He's the past. Move on. It's time about me. That's always been like that. But however, Okada wasn't done yet. He felt that he still has enough um, lifetime in him in New Japan so he fought back as hard as he possibly could. He knew exactly what Tai Chi was going to do. Tai Chi knew right from the start he had everything in his arsenal to defeat him. But however, it wasn't enough. The Rainmaker was applied on him and he lost the match. Kaguchika Okada won this match, making this now Tai Chi's first loss since the start of the tournament. So he gains no points. Okada gets two. Next match. Now, this one's also another one. As you know, I did mention in the previous episode with the G1 that Jay White is also was undefeated on this one. However, Will Ospreay, prior before this match, he only had uh, la, 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 two wins and one losses. So anything can go on this one. So basically, this is one of those matches that was so good and so intense that you knew for a fact something was going to happen. Now... That I predicted this was going to end it. Well, to be honest with you, I was a bit of a biased. Because I wasn't sure how this was going to go. But the match was great. You knew for a fact that uh, Jay White is determined to win to ensure he goes all the way to the end. As for Will Ospreay, he is determined to go through obstacles and obstacles no matter who gets in his way. But however, he also had a deal with one more person. We're talking about Ghetto, oh, as Rocky Romero likes to call him, Fredo. So that's always been one of the things in it. But man, he did every move by the book that he was, tr everything in his arsenal. One arsenal Jay White was fully aware was the hidden blade. The one where he gives the elbow shot. He knew that was coming. He missed it at least twice, but third time's a charm. I think it was that way. I'm not sure. I got to review that again. But however, it applied and he gave, but put Jay White in the Stonebreaker, making Jay White's first loss since the start of the tournament. So that means he's now defeated. And he only had zero points on this one. Uh, J uh, Will Ospreay, too. So J this is one of those big upset matches that everybody did not expect whatsoever. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm still shocked that Tai Chi and Jay White actually lost their matches because they look prominent to win the respective blocks. Now, the main, the last match for the A block, we had Tomo Ido Ishii and Shingo Tagagi. Now, Tomo only had one, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, he had zero losses. What he had, uh, he had no wins, but ze uh, three losses. I think that's the case. Let me look at my notes here. Yes, he had three, three losses. As for Shingo, he only had one particular win on this one so this is one of those matches that i don't you know this is something important because tomo ito ishii is a hard-hitting wrestler you knew for a fact of his power his strength 
But however, you can see that the same way with Shingo Tagaki. Both of them are equally. But however, who is the strongest out of the two? There is an intense rivalry between both of them. We've seen it in the past, you know, how they are strong. And that's always been the case. But however, you didn't expect the unexpected. Somehow, someway, Tomo Ito Ishii did not give up. He actually beat Shingo Tagaki, gaining his first win in the, in this tournament since it started. So that is something. Now, some of you say, but if he had his first win, could that mean he could not make the finals? There have been occasions on that, but I will explain to you during the point system segment so you guys can get a clear idea of what I'm talking about. So I think that's it right now with the A block. So let's move on with the B block. All right, so we got the B block right now. Now, as you know, I don't normally talk about the Young Lions that much because I know some of you are not. But this match was between Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Kidd and Yoda Suji. Now, this match was very amazing. Two powerhouses. Now, we have seen both Kidd and, and Suji face off many times over. Either they've been tag team partners, either they've been opponents, or face off other uh, Young Lions. But this match was unbelievable, so hard-hitting, so determined. But however, this has proven now that the Young Lions can succeed, even with the way they have run things. Even though, if you guys are not familiarized with the Young Lions, these guys are uh, wrestlers in training. They're not allowed to use moves that they either they already knew or those who came from other promotions, they're not allowed. You're only limited with certain moves you're supposed to do like for example for a submission they're only allowed to use the boston crab every young line has been able to do that however now they're giving them permission to use the boston crab with the one knee on the back so that's always been the rules but however this is one of those matches that ended in a draw so it did prove one thing we got gabriel kid and yoda suji who are two of the strongest young lines now don't forget you you Yuya Umra, he always is a strong line too, but these two, there's no denying. So this match ended in a draw. Basically, time was out, there is no winner. So so you guys get a clear idea with the Young Lions. Now let's start with the first match of the G1. This one is from uh, Toto Yanu versus Juice Robinson. Now I did mention before in the previous episode where... Um, Toro Yanyu was also un was also undefeated. Now, however, like I said, some things do change even if you're undefeated. On certain occasions, there are wrestlers that remain undefeated, but they will lose matches some point forward in the in the tournament. And looks like this has happened again. So he was facing against Juice Robinson. Now there were many occasions where Toro Yanyu was trying to. Uh, cheat his way through like be a prankster trickster how much he tried he even tied juice robinson outside of the ring with tape and it wasn't gonna work out so it was going back and forth juice knew every trick that um totoyana was gonna use on him somehow but the one biggest upset was seeing juice robinson somehow uh outmaneuvered uh, totoyano to pick up his victory against them. So Juice Robinson picked up. But this is what he said once he was leaving. You don't bullshit a bullshitter. So it's true. Basically, Juice Robinson, he considered himself a bullshitter. But you can't bullshit your way out of a guy like him. So that's always been what he's all about. And, and, and that's pretty good. I like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next match, we had Hiroki Goto versus... Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. But this one, this match, I wasn't sure how it was going, but I was surprised how fast it went. It didn't go longer as I expected, but I somehow suspected that Zack Sabre Jr. was going to pick up the victory due to his submission moves that he normally do. He's a submission specialist. So he somehow picked up the victory a bit faster, maybe somewhere between five minutes or so. I'm not 100% sure, but... Excuse me. But yeah, and that's what happened. So he 
actually um, gained two, po uh, two points on this one. And Hiroki Goto got zero. Next match. This one is Yoshihashi versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. This is one of those matches that it will show who will uh, who is determined to continue on. Now, as I said, Yoshihashi to me seems like the like the wild card or the underdog because he somehow is now getting the push that he nerfed. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, if you guys are familiarized with him, he is the top ace of New Japan. So basically, it's either way, but. It was so amazing how this was going between them, but it did show that Tanahashi was determined to go to the end, but we'll see how far he can go. But unfortunately, the way it ended, it's Tanahashi picking up the victory as always. So this is a good match to watch. I'm not saying he's one of the greatest, but however, this match was, next match was something that you may call a Civil War match. It's Bullet Club member versus Bullet Club member. We had Evil, along with the master spoiler, Dick Togo, versus Kenta. Now, I wasn't sure how this is going to go. Both men are determined to make it to the end. Now, I don't know how Kenta would feel about Evil or the same thing. Evil, on the other hand, he's determined to step out of the shadows of of Tetsuya Naito and that's what he did but now he's determined to regain what he felt what that he lost as for Kenta he would gain whatever he wants but of course Dick Togo will do whatever it takes to ensure that evil gets his his victory but I was surprised how it was going there was no holdbacks no one was holding back from both sides from both evil or Kenta whatsoever However, Kenta did use the, the briefcase for the IWGP uh, US contract that he had in there. So he whacked him with it. But however, it wasn't enough, especially when, when Evil had a guy like Dick Togo. So Evil picked up the victory on this one because that's why he's called Evil. Now, this wasn't the only match where you have a stable ma uh, member versus another stable member. You have... Sanada, a member of the Los Ingobernables de Japón, versus the leader of Los Ingobernables and the current double champion, Tetsuya Naito. This is one of those matches. Now, I did mention before, Tetsuya Naito was, in fact, undefeated throughout this entire tournament. However, Sanada was unable to pick up a victory in his first three matches. But in the last uh, episode, uh, last uh, tr uh, B Block uh, series he was in, he had some harsh words to Sonata. But I don't know how Sonata felt about his words, what he had to say. But there was, like I said, like what I said about K Kenta and Evil, there was no holding back between them. This is the same thing. But you probably ask yourself, who will win this one? I was surprised, but however, I say this is a great match. I was seeing a lot of Sonata determined not to lose another match. As for Tetsuya Naito, he will do whatever it takes to remain undefeated. But, as always, Sonata pulled it out. He actually did two of the moonsaults out of the ring out of, out, on, on Tetsuya Naito to pick up the victory. And it was a great match to see it. And however, the way the match ended after it was all over, you see Sonata pu uh, pulling out the the fist bump that Ingor Benavides do. That is the sign of unity. So basically, despite the fact that Sonata won this match, he just continues to show his loyalty to the unity of Ingor Benavides, even though he's not evil, even though he's been tag team partners with him before. But it proved Sonata is here to stay. And he finally picked up his first victory in this tournament. So what does this mean? Could Sonata catch up to make it all the way to the finals? Well, let's talk about that in the point system. All right, so we're here to do the point system review on how many wins and losses they have and what are the current point status on every person on the A and the B block. So let's start with the A block. Kodei Bushi has three wins, one losses, with total points of six. 
Jeff Cobb. One win, three losses, total points of two. Kaguchika Okada. Two wins, two losses with the total points of four. Tomohiro Ishii. One win, three losses with the total points of two. Will Ospreay. Three wins, one loss with the total points of six. Shingo Tagagi. One win, three losses, total points, two. Minoru Suzuki. Three wins, one loss with total points of six. Tai Chi. Three wins, one loss, total points, six. Jay White. Three wins, one loss, total points, six. Yujiro Takahashi. Zero, four losses, zero wins. So basically, he looks like he could be done for. That's my honest opinion. Now, let's talk about the B block. Who it, uh, what's the, the status on that? Hiroshi Tanahashi. Two wins, two losses with a total points of four. Juice Robinson. Three wins, one losses with a total points of six. Hiroki Goto. One win, three losses, total points, two. Toro Yano. Three wins, one losses, total points, six. Yoshihashi. One win, three losses, total points, two. Tetsu at Naito. Three wins, one loss, six points. Sanada. One win, three losses, total points, two. Zack Sabre Jr., two wins, two losses, total points, four. Kenta, two wins, two losses, total points, four. Evil, two wins, two losses with the total points of four. So you get the idea. Now, however, if you noticed how some are in the six-point range, it's surprisingly that none of them have able to gain up to eight points to be far more advanced now if you're far more advanced in the point system that is the sign of guarantee that you may get a spot to continue on to the semifinals. now how can we know for sure you just got to pay attention to the upcoming uh days uh of the g1 it could happen at any given time so however how do we know who will advance now those who have like two points can they catch up yes they can However, it all depends on certain matches. Now, let's say, um, let, let's use a person, for example, who has two points. Uh, who can we use? Okay, let's say Hiroki Goto. Let's say he won his next two matches. Now, if he's able to advance a little bit forward or or so then you will see now it all depends on how it is now let's say a, a wrestler who is still maybe lesser points but able to win his match against a guy who most likely could advance to the semifinals if that person with the most points loses then a guy like Hiroki Goto would win that's been various occasions even in a time limit draw as well it happened uh, prime example of that ma that type of scenario took place uh, what was it? Two years ago with Hiroshi Tanahashi. He was in a match against uh, Kaguchika Okada. But the, however, the match ended with a time limit draw with... Um, with uh, him advancing to the semifinals. So anything can go in this tournament. So keep that in mind. So we're going to keep on moving forward with the continuation of the G1. So I hope you guys understand the point system, and I hope you guys enjoy the review for both the G1 A and B blocks for this year. So right now, I must bid all of you adieu, so goodbye, and have a nice day. Bang!